Grant, you know, a lot of people have tough times in life and in finances. Thanks for uh, for coming all the way over and joining us again. Um, you know, you opened your your legal practice years back in bankruptcy. And, you know, when people have the a tough time, bankruptcy certainly is not something you talk about around the water cooler with the people you work with. Um, where can somebody kind of start or what should somebody start thinking about as far as using that as a strategy to get back on their feet? It is, in fact, a, a, a last resource uh, in terms of getting out of problems because obviously it's going to have the ultimate effect on your credit rating. Missing payments is, in and of itself is enough to damage credit ratings, but bankruptcy has a very hard hit on, on the credit ratings, and it lasts for 10 years. So the reality is, is that most people look at it as the last option they have. They should anyway. Um, but the reality is, is that you can deal with a lot of debts there that you can't deal with other ways. Um, there are, unfortunately, a number of creditors who won't even begin to deal with you until you're in default or on the verge of bankruptcy. Um, a lot of the mortgage companies and banks that are out there right now, uh, I find we want to come to them. A, co- a client comes to me and says, I've missed my mortgage payments. I've lost my job. I have other debts that I just am not being able to pay anymore. The house is underwater. What do I do? We'd like to go to them and if they've got a good job or they're working consistently, is to work out a, a mortgage modification. The problem is, is that a lot of the mortgage companies, Countrywide, bank, you know, what is now Bank of America and Chase, won't even talk to them until they're behind on their payments. Um, well, there was even the cases that I believe were documented and recorded where the, the reps from the bank told them to start missing payments. Yes. And there's all sorts of lawsuits about that now. So... You have that problem. So the first misconception that people have about bankruptcy is it's going to leave them in a position where they have no options, they have nothing they can work with. It actually is a very valuable tool. The threat of it is a a strong tool as as well. Um, They have to make a determination as to where they belong. There are a number of different chapters in bankruptcy that they can file. For most individuals, they're going to look at either Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. There are going to be some exceptions where you have an extremely high income or, more importantly, a lot of personal debt that's going to force them into a Chapter 11, which they don't want to do. Um, Chapter 7 is a very common thing. It is you file, you receive uh, a discharge. The whole process should take between 90 to 120 days from from initial filing to the end. At the end of that, if there are no big problems, you receive the discharge, it wipes out the debts that you've listed, and really you're, you retain all of everything that comes into your possession after the filing date. Anything, any property, assets, cash, anything that you had before that is part of the bankruptcy estate and can be administered by a bankruptcy trustee. The biggest uh, concern in a seven is There is a trustee who's put in place. Uh, We have panel trustees. Most of them are attorneys uh, who can, who have the ability to look at the schedules that you filed and all the information you file. Their job is to find where the money is. Uh, They have the ability to liquidate assets and to distribute that to your creditors on a pro rata basis. Um, But the the big advantage for seven, again, is you're in and you're out. You don't have to continue making payments. If somebody considers going through bankruptcy, and I, I, I see read that this is a fairly fast-growing industry, or it was, there's got to be some myths. I mean, people, there's, oh, there's myths in everything. There's myths in mortgage. There's myths in buying houses. What are some of the myths that surround bankruptcy if people feel like one of these chapters is going to be maybe their last resort? Well, I think the first one is, is they, it's, when you talk to somebody, uh, the common mis- misconception is is that the people who are filing bankruptcies are the deadbeats. They they don't want to pay their bills back. Uh, they want to take advantage and leave a creditor hanging. My experience is just the opposite. It's almost always the result of a major uh, problem in their life. Usually it's a medical expense. Uh, someone who had a heart attack, has cancer, or a major medical problem, and did not have medical insurance. 
all of a sudden they're facing anywhere between 200000 to 250000 to $500,000 in medical expenses, and they simply can't pay them. Or they've lost their job, and they can't make the mortgage payment anymore. And I see more and more uh, people who are over the age of 50 who are looking at bankruptcy as a possibility. And the reality is they want to pay their bills. They've almost always exhausted their 401K. They've taken money out of their uh, retirement accounts, everything, to pay these debts. And when they come to us or to a bankruptcy attorney, they've done a lot of things they probably shouldn't have done. Well, it, it kind of comes to mind. It's you want to pay your bills, but at what expense? Right. And that's the second myth is that people assume that when they go into bankruptcy, when they come out, they're not going to have anything. And really, both under uh, Washington state law and under the federal law, of bankruptcy law, there are a number of exemptions which make it, you're not going to come out rich. I'm not going to uh, paint a picture that doesn't exist, but you're going to, more than likely, you have the ability to retain your home. You're going to get an exemption for a car. So unless you have a brand new Lexus that has a substantial amount of equity in it, uh, you're going to be it able might have to been why you ended up in bankruptcy <laughs> exactly. in the first place, right? Yeah, you're going to have more of the basics. You're going to be able to keep your library. You're going to be able to keep uh, your most of your furnishings. Unless you have a uh, four-carat diamond ring, you're going to keep your wedding band and the engagement ring. Uh, you're going to be able to maintain a lifestyle. Uh, particularly in Chapter 7, there isn't somebody looking over your shoulder. Now, if you go into Chapter 13, which is considered a, a wage earner plan, you're going to be in bankruptcy a little bit longer. And that's one of the other myths is this process is going to take forever. At most, it's going to take five years, which sounds like a long time. Uh, but, for instance, Chapter 13, the idea is to have the, the debtor pay available income to its creditors over a long-term process. Um, and... The hope is, at the end of the day, they're actually going to get a very broad discharge. Um, 13 has a lot of advantages, uh, particularly for someone that has a, a home. And in this market, the value of the house has dropped below what's owed on it. It was almost always the case, what we see. And it probably also is they have multiple secured creditors against that. 13 has a wonderful, from the Debtor's perspective, wonderful little advantage that you can strip down secured creditors. And let's say you've got a house that has now got $500,000 in value. And you've got $750,000 in secured loans against it. And the second is completely underwater. There's no equity at all uh, to cover them. You can strip that down to an unsecured debt and treat it as an unsecured debt as opposed to, uh, in, a, in a, most bankruptcies, they're going to retain their security interest. They're going to want to foreclose, go down that road. Same thing with a car. If you're driving a used car that doesn't have a lot of equity in it or value and it's worth less than is owed on it, in most circumstances, unless it's brand new, you can strip that down to the actual value so that you're only paying the actual value of the vehicle. So a lot of uh, the people I see look at 13 because they want to maintain their home. They want to maintain their cars and whatnot. Their life in some retrospect. Yeah, ways. and they're just in a position where they can't pay what they uh, initially agreed to pay. Um, from a creditor standpoint, I represent a, a couple of banks. They don't like 13 because they have an expectation that they're going to get paid a certain amount. And now the reality is all they're getting is that reduced amount on their security. Well, client. and it, it also would seem that a lot of people who maybe had those additional liens, second mortgages, that's probably what they used to fund their lifestyle in the first place. I know we see a lot of that in mortgage. And now it's it's not, it was not, typically it wasn't used to per, maybe purchase the house, but it did buy the car and the boat and, and the jet skis or whatnot. Right. And, um, you know, so that, it, it, I guess it kind of, a kind of allows you to get out of it at that point. Yeah, there's no question that when you go through bankruptcy, you're going to have a lifestyle change, or you should. You've kind of wasted the whole process if you come out at the other end and you haven't changed your lifestyle, um, if you haven't gotten rid of kind of the excess things that you don't need anymore. I imagine you don't like to see people twice. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> For one thing, they usually don't want to pay me that, that, that time. Um, but they can come out on the other end. Credit uh, is a major concern. One of the myths, another one of the myths is if we go through bankruptcy, um, we're not going to be able to have credit on the other end, and we need credit 
simply to exist. I mean, more and more people, very few people live on a cash basis. Uh, but the reality is, is that it's a two-edged sword. Uh, yes, you're going to lose the position on your credit report. It's going to say bankruptcy for the next 10 years uh, when somebody pulls it up. But it's also very possible that you're going to be able to re resurrect your credit more quickly than just letting the problem fester month after month after month. Uh, one of the things you can do on the other end is you get a secured credit card. There are companies that specialize in this. They do have a fairly high interest rate compared to what you might get otherwise if you've got a great credit rating. But you give them a $500 deposit, for instance, and they hold that. And each month you're allowed to charge up to that amount. And it's which, almost like a debit card, but they call it, I mean, in, in some ways, but you just repay the money that you had deposited. Exactly. And then at, at the end of the month, you pay that down. And usually within six months to a year, you've improved the rating with them and with other people that are looking at your credit to the point where you may be able to apply for an unsecured credit card and, and slowly rebuild uh, your credit. You have the option. Uh, you can always pay the debt that was there beforehand. Um, you have, I see a lot of people come and say, we really want to keep our Nordstrom card. You know, we've loved Nordstrom forever. They've been good to us. We want to be good to them. And you say, fine, you're going to list them and the, the debt will be discharged, but you're free to make a payment every month. They're not going to turn down the money and it's not against the rules for you to, uh, pay a creditor if you choose to, but we want to make sure that we've listed them so that if things get even worse down the road. Uh, you've you've been in that position. So I think um, the, one of the other misconceptions is, is that this discharges all debt and you walk away from it. Yes, it does. But if you want to keep your house, for instance, you need to keep making the mortgage payment. Uh, but you don't you, just get to stop. I mean, it, the ha right. I, the, <laughs> you don't just get rid of your mortgage and keep the house. Correct. Uh, you, you do or have else to. A lot more people would be using that. <laughs> Although there are a lot of people out there who are simply not pay, choosing to pay their mortgages. These Isn't days. that the truth? Isn't yeah. that the truth? Um, Grant, we have about a minute left before we have to go to break. Again, we're here with Grant Courtney, uh, bankruptcy attorney. Do you guys help as a, as a bankruptcy attorney the recovery phase, or do you have some? I mean, how how does that next step work? I mean, you go through this process, and then there's you know you talked a little bit about secured credit cards. What are some other things or tips that people can you know what what's that next step they can take to kind of get back on their feet once they once they've gone there. I don't necessarily bill myself as a credit counselor, but I think that what they, I tell people uh, is they've had an opportunity to fill out 40 pages of financial information when they filed the bankruptcy. They now know, where did I overspend? Where did I – I didn't make enough Indeed. money. I was unrealistic in what my expectations were. So I think my biggest advice to them is you have to stay on top of it. You can't let it get away from you. Uh, if you suddenly see that your income is going to be going down over the next few months, if you've lost money from the market, you have to make adjustments for that. Uh, you can't continue to keep two cars when you don't need two cars. Um, you're going to need to stop eating out on a regular basis. Maybe it, it really comes down to helping people understand their lifestyle and living within their means. Yeah, it really um, is. And a lot of people allowed that to get out of hand when everybody's house was going up 10 or 15 percent. I mean, it was... Everybody was rich. They had a bank. They did. They, we, I, a fair number of the people I see are now at that position where it was every six months I was going in and refinancing it. And the banks were happy to give the money out. because At a they, lower interest rate. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And now the bank is closed. Uh, and even if they're going to keep that house, it's not going to appreciate any time in the near future. Yeah, well, and they, have, they need to adjust their lifestyle accordingly. Like we are, we are going to hit on that even more uh, later when when you join us again. Again, that's Grant Courtney, uh, bankruptcy attorney from Bainbridge Island, and you work with people not in Bainbridge Island, I imagine. Oh, I huh? do. <laughs> Anywhere in the Puget Sound. All right. When we come back, uh, people who have gone through bankruptcy have maybe got lost their house, might be wondering where they're going to live next, and and try to figure out how to get that next dream home that maybe they won't own but they'll live in we'll be right back and we're going to talk all about that my name is ben brashen you're listening to brashenomics